Welcome to The Kingdom, a podcast dedicated to CCBC Essex Athletics in a land defended by Sir Ross's Knights. Now here's your host, Rocco Jeppy. Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. Rocco Jeppy here alongside my co-host Aaron Thomas, and uh, we have a special treat today. Today is preview day, as we did in the fall, and uh, the weather's getting crisper outside, so you know what that means. It is time to hit the hardwood, and a uh, very exciting time here in the kingdom, because for the first time in 15 years, women's basketball has returned. Aaron, very exciting uh, moments and a uh, very exciting time to be a member of the kingdom. Yeah, this really almost is uh, maybe the second or third step in a uh, long road to getting women's basketball back uh, at here, here at the castle. So, um, you know, this is one step closer to being able to actually watch and call some games. Exactly right. And the man leading that charge, he is in studio with us today. We say hello to head coach Mike Sini. Mike, welcome and thanks for joining us. Thank you guys for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, we're excited to have you. Thank you. And uh, we'll jump right in here with the questions because we know you're a busy man. Um, looking at uh, the press release that we did when you came on board, I wanted to read a quote here, and then I, I had a question on that quote. Um, Grateful to all of my student athletes and staff at Harford, we truly left a legacy in Bel Air that I think will last a long time. I'm focused and committed to building upon these experiences, and my promise is to bring the same passion, determination, and commitment to CCBC Essex. Um, when you say that, when you hear it now, the passion, determination, and commitment, what does that mean for you as a head coach? I mean, it means everything. Um, you know, I, I stand on outworking everybody, you know, that I go against, and, and, and that's everybody in the country. You know, I feel like if we, um, if we as a staff, we outwork, you know, our competition and, you know, we get our players to feel the same way about outworking, um, their opponents and you know not only will we have a successful basketball season um, I think we go on in life successful. So looking at some of the things that you were able to accomplish um, I mean honestly you could not speak a single word and we could just show this to people this kind of gives a, a large part of what you have been as a head coach um, 135 and 15 that's a 90 percent win percentage uh, four NJCAA Division One women's basketball and national tournament appearances you won five straight Region 20 Division I uh, titles, the, where am I at, District C Championship three times, and you are currently, as a head coach, riding an 82-game winning streak as a head coach against conference opponents. Um, how proud are you were of, of that record and, and what you've been able to accomplish so far? It, it means a lot. Um, you know, when I, when I was able to take a step back, um, this year and kind of reflect on my career at Hartford and, um, you know, all the great years that we had, it, it's, it's kind of remarkable. Um, but, you know, again, it goes, it, it really goes to our student athletes that we had over the course of the, uh, or over the course of that five-year run. Um, you know, <laughs> I was really fortunate, man, you know, to coach a lot of really, really talented ball players. So, you know, I, like I tell people, you know, Gino Oriema wouldn't be Gino Oriema if he didn't get, you know, the, the best players, you know. So I, I, I lean on those players, you know, to, to, to help me build that resume you just spoke of. Now you had your uh, first scrimmage as a team on uh, Monday, October 14th. Could you uh, share with us and the listeners uh, some of the things you guys learned as a team? You know, the, the outcome of the game, since it's the first game, I don't think is as important as uh, what you guys learned as a squad. Yeah, I'm. You know, Aaron, I'm trying to put that into perspective right now as a coach. <laughs> um, you know, it. I think we all had had some butterflies, um, me included. You know, just you know, being on the sidelines representing a different school. Um, us, you know, putting out ten freshmen. <laughs> um, you know, their first college game experience playing against a a four year school in Washington of Venice. Um, I think we all learned. Um, it, no matter what we do offensively, you know we have to get stops, and I think that'll come, that'll come as we go along here. Um, we have a really frantic scrimmage season, so before we get to that first game on November the second here at home, so you know I think we, you know, we'll watch watch our film today and um, you know pick out some things we need to do defensively and then work on them today and tomorrow before we play UMBC on Thursday. When you scheduled the, the scrimmages, is that kind of the mindset you want to play, you know, like uh, Washington Aventus is NAIA school, UMBC, of course, is uh, Division One. 
Um, do you, is that the, the process as a head coach? You want to play the best competition you can when you can to prepare for the season? Most definitely. Um, you, you definitely want to throw your girls into the fire there early um, just to see where we're built of, you know, and, and, and try to fix things, you know, before we get to November the 2nd because um, that's when it really counts. So, you know, we definitely want to have a, a really, you know, I wouldn't say tough schedule, but a, ske a schedule that's going to, you know, try to make us better early, you know, try to get the kinks out early. So I'm excited about the, what, what, what we have coming here in the near future. Let's talk a little bit about the student athletes. Um, tell us about the team and what we should expect from this team. Give us some names and, and uh, strengths and weaknesses. Um, as a team, I think, you know, our strength and, you know, if anybody's seen my, any of my teams play, we're, we're going to run and gun and um, we play a really, really frantic pace. Um, my idol as a coach is Mike D'Antoni. He coaches the Houston Rockets. Um, I really adapted that, adopted. I'm sorry that um, ten seconds or less um, shooting the basketball within ten seconds or less when we get the ball. Um, he he aims for forty three pointers a game. I scale that back to about thirty. Um, so we're you know we're going to run and gun um, on offense on defense. We're going to press a lot, um, and we're fueled really by our our two starting guards, Maya Moy and Casey Gagan. Um, both for Division One transfers. Um, Maya Moy is a transfer from Fl Florida A&M, and Casey Gagan is a transfer from the University of Rhode Island. So, um, you know, they're gonna they're gonna get that pace rolling for us, and um, hopefully, we can continue to have some of the same successes we've had in the past. All right. Well, obviously, we have more questions for you, but uh, we're up against our first commercial break. So, when we return, we're gonna continue our preview interview for CCBC Essex Women's Basketball with head coach Mike Sini. You're listening to the Kingdom Podcast, a podcast dedicated to CCBC Essex Athletics. Let's talk about college. Times have changed. We've changed. I refuse to accept an education that comes with a mountain of crippling debt. I will not confuse a fancy name with a quality education. Let's talk practical. Let's talk flexible. Let's talk smart education. For all the practical thinkers, the achievers, the can't wait to get started types out there, your community college is waiting. Rethink what's possible with CCBC. Visit us online at ccbcmd.edu and see what you can be. Times have changed, and I will not stay stuck in a job because college has no time for me. I will not let a limited schedule limit me. Rethink what's possible with CCBC. Visit us online and see what you can be. And we're back. I'm going to turn things over here to my co-host, uh, Aaron Thomas, who's going to continue with the questions. If you're just joining us, we are here with head women's basketball coach Mike Sini previewing the 2019-20 season. Now, before we went to the break, you were talking about how you were a big uh, Mike D'Antoni fan and how you uh, really liked that seven seconds or less offense. Now, that's got to help in recruiting in terms of uh, you know players like to play for that kind of style. Did that help you um, in the recruiting process and building this team? Most definitely. Um, you know, especially when you go JUCO, you know, you have to – well, you want to showcase your talents when you're at a JUCO. So um, I think our style of play gives us that opportunity. Um, when you watch Mike D'Antoni's teams over the, over the course of his career, um, not only does he have a dominant ball handler, um, his role players, they all get large contracts because their numbers are inflating. Um, so, you know, we, 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 we do a good job as a coaching staff in, on selling that point um, because the ball doesn't stick. You know, we don't just have one player getting 30 and the rest are getting five or six. So um, we definitely we, we hold our hat on, you know, having a team full of, shoot, the last three or four years we've had um, five or six girls in double figures average throughout the course of the year. So, you know, that is a huge selling point. So looking at the schedule, I mean, obviously, um, you know, many coaches, and I've done enough of these interviews to know the, the initial coach's answer will be every game on the schedule is important, right? But um, I want to look at one in particular. December 12th, you had uh, you head out to Bel Air, <laughs> up to Hartford, your first time back since uh, taking the position here. Um, would there be any emotion for you, or is this going to be uh, a business as usual or a combination of the two? Um. You know, Rock, I'd, I'd be lying if I said there wasn't any emotion on that game there. Um, it's uh, it's definitely the, the biggest the biggest game for me personally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just because just of you know, everything that I helped build over there and um, 
you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's definitely going to be an emotional time. You know, the, the, the fun that we had, the championships that we won. Um, I'm not really looking forward to going to the visitor's locker room because I don't even know where it is. <laughs> um, actually, no, I'm lying. I know where it is. I've never been inside. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it's – Again, it is going to be another game. It's a game we really need to have, um, like just like every single last one of them. So um, I'm sure the girls, they won't feel the same emotion. You know, they don't, you know, we, we did bring one girl from Hartford over, Emily Ferguson, so she'll probably have a little, you know, emotion tied as well. But, you know, I think the girls will know how big it is for me too. So I'm sure they'll come out and play hard that game. Very cool. You're going to have some big games this year. That Hartford game that uh, Rocco just brought up could be one of them. Um, do you feel like you have some players on the on this team right now who are going to be ready for big moments? Because you know you had some transfer players who are coming from D one, so they're going to be a little bit used to this moment. But you're going to have a lot of players on this team, like you said, a freshman heavy squad, where this is going to be the biggest moment or the biggest game that they've ever played in. Do you think they'll be ready for uh, that kind of challenge? Well, it's, it's, it's our job as coaches to make them ready. Um, so you know, I, again, even. I've never had a loss that I've come into the locker room and mad at our girls. Um, I, I, it's my job to prepare us every single game. Um, so it's like I said, it's, it's our job as a staff to make them ready. Um, and I think by the time we get to that, you know, that first huge test in November, I think it's on November the ninth against Cape Fear, um, a team that was in the Final Four last year. I think, you know, it's our job to get them, get them to that moment to be prepared. So when that, when that pressure comes, they're ready for it. And that goes back to one of Rock's questions about our scrimmage schedule, um, going and playing against tough teams early. So when November the ninth comes, we're playing against a team that was in the Final Four last year. That's our time to make a statement. And and to add um, something we hadn't mentioned yet, and I believe we put it out in the um, the schedule release, but uh, the schedule that we have this year, three of the four Division One or Division Two, three of the four Division One, Division Two, Division Two. It, it's early, folks. <laughs> three three of the four uh, Final Four teams from the Division Two tournament are on our schedule this year. So, um, you know. Shout out to Greg Wickup. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it is. It's a, and, and, you know, being a former uh, basketball coach himself, I'm sure that uh, lends to having a type of schedule that you would want to play tough. And, you know, you fit right in with the mentality of the coaches around here. To be the best, you got to play the best. And, most, and that's, how, that's how it is. Most definitely. I – I refuse to duck any bump. You know, we we have to all the bump out there. We have we need them on the schedule once, maybe twice if we can. You yeah. know, um, I want to play the best the best teams in the area that we can, um, and we're fortunate enough to go down out of the area down to North Carolina um, and play one of the best teams in the country. So, we're talking to head coach Mike Sini of the women's basketball program, Rocco Jeppy and Aaron Thomas here on the Kingdom Podcast. Um, let's shift gears just slightly. Let's talk a little bit about your staff. Uh, talk about your assistant coaches and uh, what each one of them bring to the table. Um, I'll start with, with the guy that's been with me the longest, um, Coach Don Udisky. Um, he came over um, from Hartford with me. Um, he's been with me the last four years. Um, it's my right hand, you know. He he's he's been with me the the longest, and you know he's one thing. One word I can say is he's loyal. Um, you know he and he's a gym rat, you know. And as assistant coach, you have to have that. Um, I brought on a former player this year, Danielle Derjean, who played for me in the 2016-2017 season. Um, she was a Division One transfer. She came to Hartford for her sophomore year. I was fortunate enough to send her to another Division One school. She played at Towson. Um, she actually won the CAA Conference Championship and played against UConn in the um, national tournament. And, you know, when I first met Danny, she she told me she wanted to be a coach. So um, she graduated, and she made the phone call, and I said, let's get started. Um uh, I'm really excited about having um, a brother of mine who I've, you know, I've been friends with since I was 11 or 12 years old um, in the sandbox together. Tyreek Cephas, he played at Coppin State, scored over a thousand points, second all time in assists at Coppin State. He's helping our guards out tremendously, running our practices when I need him to. He's doing a f fantastic job. Um, um, and last but I'm sorry. Courtney Davis, who also just graduated from Glenville State, um, she's just starting her coaching career. Um, and last but certainly certainly not least, um, Arthur Fitzhugh, um, who's a <clears throat> who's been a rival of mine for the last five years um, over at Baltimore City. I 
you know, we hadn't said two words to each other in, in five years. I was just talking to Aaron about Lakers Celtics. Um, right. Hartford and Baltimore City was Lakers Celtics all the way. Um, we didn't like each other, and we didn't even know each other. <laughs> you know, we we didn't like each other at all. Um, we we it it's it right. Uh, we were able to sit down and talk, man. Shoot. In August, um, before I even asked him to be on the staff, we were we were able to sit down and talk and talk about those wars and those battles that we had. And um, you know, we we left the conversation like, man, I didn't know you were that cool. Man, I didn't know you were that cool. <laughs> you know, so um, when the, when the opportunity presented itself to, to add him to the staff, I, I had to jump on it. I, we we really have a phenomenal staff. Um, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm I'm so excited about the team, but our staff is really, 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 really great. Yeah, I, th I think we see a lot of the staff um, day in and day out here. I mean, we'll be downstairs, you know, doing our thing and, and operations and stuff like that, the day to day, and um, we'll hear, you know, noise coming from the gym, and uh, it, it'll be, you know, two or three or you know, one o'clock, you know, whatever the case might be. But coaches are here, um, you know, working with players and, and trying to help them, you know, get to be the best that they can be. Um, very exciting time and, and having talked with and obviously been um, a part of the, the conference for so long. Uh, many of your staff I already knew and have talked with along the way, but it's it's been really interesting to see them on a day-to-day -day basis and get to know them in a different sense. Most definitely. I mean, again, it goes back to that Jim Rat title. Um, you know, our assistant coaches are really <clears throat> are really in tune with the, with our girls, and they're getting in there every single day because, you know, we have to hold them to a standard. I'm really blessed to have the staff that I have. All right, well, we're going to get in another break. Uh, when we return, we're going to continue our interview with head women's basketball coach Mike Sini. You're listening to the Kingdom Podcast, the podcast dedicated to the athletics of CCBC Essex. Let's talk about college. Times have changed, and I refuse to accept an education that comes with a mountain of crippling debt because paying off student loans for the next 30 years is not in my financial plans. For all the practical thinkers, the achievers, the can't wait to get started types out there. Your community college is waiting. Rethink what's possible with CCBC. Visit us online at ccbcmd.edu and see what you can be. Times have changed and I will not stay stuck in a job because college has no time for me. I will not let a limited schedule limit me. Rethink what's possible with CCBC. Visit us online and see what you can be. We are back, folks. Thanks for hanging in there with us. We are talking today with head coach of uh, the women's basketball program, Mike Sini. I'm Rocco Jeppe alongside Aaron Thomas. And uh, Aaron, we're, we're rolling down this, uh, this list of questions here. Yeah, folks, we, we prepare a little bit for this show. Um, you know, not much, but we like to think we prepare some. Um, so we're going to continue the Q&A here with head coach Mike Sini with uh, Aaron on the next question. I think all the fans at home who are listening right now could tell, just like Rocco and I can, that the expectations are pretty high for this uh, team. Even though this is we, uh, it, it's even though this is season one. But I think a great question to ask is, how do you define success for this first season, or how will you define success for this first season? Wow, um, Aaron. Uh, to be honest with you, in previous years, my definition of success was to get all my sophomores a full athletic scholarship to a four-year school. And that's how I defined a successful year. I'd be lying if I said this year was diff wasn't was different. It's different this year. Um, I really feel like we have the group necessary to win a national title, and we've been preaching this since day one. Um, so this year is a little different for me. So to get that question now, Aaron, the answer is a national championship. You know, that, that's that's the bottom line. Um, we want to win the national title from day one. The girls know it. Um, my staff know it. And that's what we've been preaching, you know, since our first team meeting on August 1st. You know, so a national championship is a, is a, is a successful year for us this year. Well, look, fans at home, if that doesn't get you excited about this upcoming season, I, I don't uh... – know what will. I've said it numerous times uh, during this fall season, calling uh, soccer games and volleyball games, hyping up this basketball season. I mean, when you're at this level, no matter what it is you do as a player, coach, fan, or even myself as a broadcaster, you have very few opportunities to be a part of history. 
But when you're going to be a part of this team this year, you're going to be a part of history because this is the first time in 15 years that uh, women's basketball is back here at the Castle. So I was already excited, but then hearing that uh, response right there got me I told, that much more excited. I told Greg, if anybody's ever been here, we got all the banners on the wall. I need that national championship banner in the center of the court. We need that <laughs> thing up high in the rafters, man. That, that's the goal for us this year, and we're, we're not going to stop till we get it. I'll tell you how excited and how much confidence um, we have in this team when it comes to expectations. We our, our intramural program is basketball here, so we have intramurals on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And, um, you know, every year, every semester, we hear um, when you guys gonna get basketball back when you gonna get basketball back so somebody asked me that last week and they said you know hey when you gonna get basketball back so we do have basketball we got women's basketball starts November 2nd they're like oh women's basketball women's ba-. and I said listen I could take the best nine people here in intramurals <laughs> and put them on the court against our five our starting five and they will whoop you. <laughs> That's how excited we are. No. And, and I've only been to a, a, a handful of practices, not not counting the the hour long photo shoot that we had last week, <laughs> <laughs> which which went really well. Um, it was I, I tell you, I was talking with our athletic administrator Greg Wickop the next day, and uh, we were talking about it, and and he had said to me, he says, you know, I don't have a problem with that. Do you? A, a coach that actually takes hold of you know something that's going on with and for his team, and and helps you make it happen i said no you know i'm cool hanging out an hour if it means you know uh getting getting the shots getting them right you know it's when uh we have uh hair and makeup going on <laughs> that those are the sessions that that you know i'm kind of like could, couldn't we have done hair and makeup before you got here um looking at one other thing i wanted to kind of mention and bring up here um you know soccer's getting ready to wrap up this week as far as the regular season and um shout out to feeds oh my gosh it's it has been for those of you not paying attention um going into um our game against frederick on october 15th the men's team is 13 and 3 the women's team is 15 and 1 <laughs> the men are ranked 19th in the country the women are ranked 13th in the country for division 1 um, it's an exciting time, and, and part of that excitement has been seeing you around these games. I don't know that I've seen another coach of another sport at, at different, so many different games, and it's not just, co- you know, not just soccer, the, the games that are you know, tearing it up right now. Um, the team was out at volleyball a couple of times, and I, th- I want to say it was the game against Allegheny that the basketball team was in the bleachers, you know, where we, uh, where we shoot from for the live stream, and they are just cheering this team on like I haven't heard in my life. And for a freshman-laden team, a team that was still learning how to gel together and, and play together and communicate, um, they beat Allegheny that night in three straight sets. I mean, what, do you, what is your philosophy when it comes to – interdepartmental support and just being there for the other programs so when I was young I, my first year um, my athletic director was Ken Krasalovic and um, you know he, he told me the importance of, of you know being there and supporting every single team that we have here at, at Hartford it was at the time um, and, and I took that with me because you know it's a family we're all, all one big family um, I try to make I try to make our girls come out to as many games as we can, um, and I you know personally want to get out and, and show support to all the coaches that we have, um, you know, Coach Fiedler man that's my guy. Um, I I I I find myself just out there watching him. You know he, you know people. Listen, I, I think I'm pretty good, but but that guy he he's the true goat man, and you know what he's doing with with men and women's soccer. Um, you know, I want to steal from him. You know, I want to steal, you know, different different, you know, techniques that he does and that he says to his men and women. Um so, you know, I I find myself out there just saying, "Hey," and I'll leave. I'll I'll leave him halfway through after we're up. I don't know whatever we're up, how many goals, and I'll say, "Hey coach, thanks for the show, man." You know, just just because like he I think he we operate on on some of the same type of wavelengths. Mm-hmm. Um so you know, I, I like I said, I, I'm really appreciative to the entire staff that we have, and I just want to show as much love as I can to all the sports. Uh, I think that's a great point that you bring up there. I was kind of already thinking that that uh, you guys shared some similarities and uh, some. Um, well, I don't have seven straight region titles, so <laughs> I, I'm. I, Resume's I, not the same. I, I, yeah, I'm the baby goat. He's he's the real goat. <laughs> It's been great. It's uh, like I said a couple minutes ago. I mean, uh, fans at home listening, if if this isn't getting you excited about this upcoming season, um, 
you must not like NBA basketball, as the Kings announcer says. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you know that. <laughs> Any uh, Anything you want to add about the squad or anything you want to get out there and into Knights Nation? Yeah, I mean, I – I really believe that you know with support. You know, I, I don't want I don't want anybody to jump on the bandwagon late. I'm telling you guys right now, we're 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 ready. You know, we're full steam ahead. Um, we're gonna take our our lumps and bruises right now in the preseason. So when November the second comes, um, you know, you guys get a, a finished product that we're proud of, and it's not even gonna be a finished product yet, but a product that's really close to finish because, like I said, it's our job as coaches to have them ready um, by November the second, and that's been our that's been our job. So and that's that's what we've been working towards. So. Um, you know, I hope we all can come out and support us because, you know, like I said, we, we have really big aspirations and goals this year. All right. Well, Mike, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. And folks out there, keep tabs on this team all season long on Twitter at Knights underscore WBB. You can find them on Instagram at CCBC Essex underscore WBB. Coming up on Sunday, October 27th, that'll be your first chance to see this team in action. It's the 2019 CCBC Essex Women's Basketball Jamboree. Doors at 930. Games begin at 10 a.m. It's a full day of scrimmages. Just $5 gets you in the door and access to over 20 scrimmages for the day. You can't beat that deal. I'm telling you, I don't care where you go. You're not beating that deal. And then the season opener, as you heard uh, mentioned throughout this broadcast, uh, Saturday, November 2nd, we will be hosting Mercer here at the Kingdom. Uh, for more information on that, follow along on our website, ccbcessexnights.com, and you can follow us on Twitter at Sports. And remember... Go on to this YouTube channel and subscribe to the channel. Anytime we add content, we go live, anything in that nature, you can set it up that you get a notification. You won't miss a thing. Aaron, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm even more excited for the start of basketball season after this interview. Absolutely. I'm right there with you. I'm very, very excited. Once again, special thanks to head coach Mike Sini of our women's basketball squad. For Aaron Thomas, I'm Rocco Jeppe, thanking you again for joining us here on the Kingdom Podcast, a podcast dedicated to CCBC Essex Athletics. We hope that you stop by again next week. So long.